there, I'm Julie Feifan Balzer, and today I'm gonna show you a super easy way to make your own stencil using your scanning cut. We're gonna use that stencil then to paint our own custom background for a scrapbook page, and then the title on that page will also be cut using the scanning cut. So I'm gonna show you a super easy way to make a stencil, and I'm using black cardstock. Now, if you're like me and your cardstock is textured on one side and flat on the other, then you wanna make sure to use the flat side up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut out some wonky pod shapes. Now, one of the things that I like about cutting out shapes as opposed to drawing a stencil is that there's some sort of serendipity. You know, sometimes you end up with a design that you wouldn't have if you had drawn, and you can't really be as perfect when you're just hacking around with a pair of scissors. You kind of have to embrace the imperfection of it all. So one of the things that happened to me when I was starting to design this stencil, and I want to share this with you because I think it's kind of fun, is I had all these pod shapes and I have a couple here that I've already cut out to show you. And I started to try to arrange them onto my white piece of paper, thinking about what I wanted my stencil to look like. Did I want it to be a flower or some kind of flowing thing? And then I realized that I had all these pieces that were the between pieces. So I decided just to cut them out to see what would happen, and something magical happened, which is I really was able to figure out the design of my stencil. Because I started placing them next to each other, and I thought, gosh, I really like the way that that looks. They're starting to sort of vibrate and hum together, and the design is starting to feel really, really good to me. So I just started to keep playing around, adding in the pieces, spacing them correctly, and I want to show you one really important thing, which is I just design my stencil so that it would seamlessly repeat. What does that mean? Well, that means that when you start at this end and go to that end, it's just gonna be one long seamless repeat because the two pieces I have on the end fit together both this way and that way. And I think that is pretty cool. So once I have my design all set like I do here, I'm just going to adhere it down, bring it over to my scan and cut, and scan it on in. So I'm going to lift the film on my scanning mat, slide my cut pieces of paper in there, and then I'm gonna open the dust cover on my scan and cut, and then I'm gonna do the double bump. Again, to load this really cleanly, I like to have my hands up at the top rather than the bottom, hold it with one hand, and go ahead and press the load button. Once that's done, I'm gonna choose scan, and then I'm gonna choose scan to cut data, and I'm gonna press the start button, and the machine is gonna take in my little cutouts, and it's gonna scan that in for me. And it'll take just a moment as the computer built inside the machine, again, no internet, no computer, no nothing, it's just that built-in computer inside the machine is scanning in all of that data. And then once it says recognizing, I know that the process is beginning of converting everything over to cut data. So once this is scanned in, I'm gonna choose the first scanning option, which is an outline scan. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag my arrows in for a nice, tight scan, because who knows what stray things could be on the mat or whatever else, but I just wanna get that data done. And then right here behind this slider menu is a little thing that's hidden called delete size. And what that is, if I zoom in here, you can see it a little bit better, is there's a tiny little margin that's been put around these pieces, but I don't want that margin. I want it to be absolutely nothing as close to my wonky shapes as I can get. So that's what I've done now, is I've brought that in so there's absolutely no margin. Of course, if you want a margin, you can increase it to whatever you would like. Then I'm gonna hit OK, OK again, and then I'm going to save it. Now I can save it either into the machine or into my USB stick, and I'm gonna save it right into my machine, and it's gonna tell me exactly what it's gonna name it. It's gonna call it M, a bunch of zeros and 26. So I'm gonna say, okay, thank you so much. Now I'm gonna hit the home button to go back to the main space, and this is a scary screen that comes up. Is it okay to delete all patterns? And we know we saved it, so the answer is, of course, okay. But if you didn't, you could hit cancel, and it would make sure to go back for you. Now, I'm gonna choose pattern, and I'm gonna go into my save data, and as you'll recall, we saved it into the machine, and now I just scroll backwards, and there it is, number 26. So here it is, and I'm gonna hit okay, that's the right pattern. But here's the problem. Can you see that red highlight? 
And you'll notice all these pieces are individual. Well, I don't want them to be individual. I want them to be one large unit. So I'm going to go into the editing screen here. I'm going to choose select all and I'm going to do that right here. And you can see now it has chosen every single part of that design. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to choose this button which basically groups them together. The machine is going to ask me is it OK to unify the patterns and tell me it's irreversible. I'm going to say that's fine. I don't mind. I'm cool with that. So now this is all one large unit and what that means is I can simply resize it and they all are going to resize at the same time which I think is kind of awesome. And now what I'm going to do is I actually want three pieces of this because we're going to build a larger stencil. So I'm just going to say I want three please and I want them all to be eight and a half inches wide. Okay. And now I'm going to get three of them and I can just drag them apart now and I can lay them out however I want. Now if I want to nudge them a little I can use the arrow keys in here to do a little bit of nudging. I can zoom in to see if it looks like how I want and I can just continue to play with it until this design is exactly what I want it to be. And that's one of the things that I love about the Scan and Cut is that you always have the possibility of customizing absolutely everything. Okay, now I kind of like the way that this is laid out. It looks cool to me, but you know what? Again, these are three separate pieces. What if I want to resize them as one? Well, I'm just going to go back to that Select All function. There we go. It's all selected. I'm going to unify one more time. And I'm going to say, yes, it's okay to unify the patterns. I'm okay with it being irreversible. And now I can resize completely and totally to anything I want, this entire large group of shapes. So I'm going to hit OK. There it is. It's ready. I like it. I feel like it's time to get some stencil film and cut it out. So I'm going to go ahead and scan in my stencil film so that I can place my stencil exactly where I want it. This stencil film is awfully white, so we'd never be able to see it when we scanned it in. So there's a little trick. I'm going to take a permanent black marker and I'm simply going to run around the edges with it. Now I do like to do this on top of a piece of paper because as you can see, I'm going right off the edge with my permanent black marker and that makes sure that I'm actually really at the edge edge of the stencil film. And of course, if you have a stencil film that's blue or some other color, you don't have to worry about this, but this is just a trick to help that scanner actually be able to see what we're doing. So then once the pen on this dries, we're ready to take it over and scan it in. And I could apply it anywhere on the mat I want because of course the built-in scanner is going to help me with that. And I'm just taking my spatula tool now to really smooth down that stencil film and make sure that it's absolutely stuck to my mat. I find that doing this just makes sure that I don't have any accidents when we actually start cutting. I'm going to open my dust cover and then I'm going to place two hands at the front of the mat and I'm going to bump it up there to make sure it's going to load in properly. Hold it with one hand, press the load button, and in we go. And now I'm ready to hit the scan button and let's scan this. So you can see the stencil material here and now I can drag this and place it. If Do I want it right in the middle? Do I want it to the side? I can go back in and resize it, but it's perfect. I like it. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit cut and I'm going to make sure my blade is at the right depth and we are going to cut it. So now I'm just going to press start and we're going to be off and cutting. So it's finished cutting. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to unload my mat, pull it out, and now I'm ready to pull my stencil off of the mat. So if I need my spatula tool, which is sometimes helpful, I can just bend the mat, get the spatula under there, and then here we go. I'm going to rip it off. And if there's any little pieces that are left inside, it's easy enough just to take a minute to poke them out. They should just come right out of there, no problem. And then my new stencil is ready to use. So I have here my stencil and I've got a sheet of pink cardstock and then this dirty filthy palette paper. This is actually all dried paint even though it looks like it might not be. And I'm going to go ahead and put out some acrylic paint. And I'm using some fluid acrylic. I'm actually even using a little bit of gesso. I'm using some matte acrylics. I'm just mixing up whatever my favorite kind of acrylic paints are. And I'm going to go ahead and splash them right down onto my palette paper. You could also use a paper plate or anything like that. The application tool I'm using is something that I'm 
probably be familiar to some of you who like makeup. This is simply a makeup, a cosmetic wedge sponge, I believe is the official name. And I buy these by the bushel because I love them. And I like to use this wide part right here as my applicator. So what I do is I go into my paint and then I go out of it. You wanna tap on and tap off because if you have too much paint on here, it's gonna roll under your stencil design and be a big old mess and we don't want that. And I like to mix up my colors on my palette paper. So I'm gonna mix into that red and that white at the same time. And then I have my stencil here and I'm just going to start at the corner and I'm gonna go ahead pouncing up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm just gonna continue doing that, mixing in other colors as I go. And because I'm keeping all my colors warm, that is to say I'm mixing red with yellow, which I know is gonna look good, and white as well, and on their on a pink background, I'm not worried too much about how it's gonna look or if it's gonna turn out okay or what's gonna happen. So just remember that. If you keep all your colors warm or all your colors cold, then your color mixing is always gonna be really pleasing to the eye and you don't have to worry about it. You know, people go crazy about color mixing and they worry so much, but here's the thing, you look at a rainbow which has every single color, right? And yet we find it so beautiful and so attractive. And that's because the colors are separated a little bit by warmth and cold, right? You have your Roy G. Biv, so you've got your red, orange, and yellow next to each other and then we get into the green, the indigo, and the violet. So I'm just gonna continue to go up and down here making sure that I get my stencil design all done. The one thing that I wanna point out to you is remember when we were making the stencil and I promised you that it was going to be a seamless design. Well, I am not a liar, so I want to show you how that works. So let me just finish up this one little part and then I'll show that to you. Okay, this is such a thin layer of paint that I don't really have to worry about a drawing, but let's take a peek at how it looks. Ooh, I like it so much. It turned out really cool. And now, to get the next part of my cardstock, all I have to do is lay my stencil right next to the design. And actually, this stencil film is thin enough that I can actually see right through it, and I know that I'm lining this up so that the next part of the design completely corresponds. So that now, when I do this pouncing motion again, up and down, I'm gonna end up with a seamless design. So, you'll have to wait for me to finish stenciling this before you get to see the result. So now, Ta-da! It's totally awesome and completely seamless. It looks fabulous. So now all I have to do is I have to finish the rest of this page just by putting my stencil, and again, I can see right through it so I can line it right up and know that I'm gonna have a seamless design that continues on. So I'm just gonna finish up this background and then we're gonna start making a scrapbook page. So now that we have our fabulous, unique, one-of-a-kind background completely put together, it's time to put together our page. So I'm working with a photo right here. You can see my red dress coordinates quite nicely with our red background, but I need there to be a little bit of contrast. So I grabbed a bunch of tags that I had painted previously and messed around with, and I decided that I played around with the black tags a little bit, but I finally decided that I think these blue tags really look great. So I'm just gonna lay one of them on top of the other like so. So, and that creates really a grounding place for me to put my photo. So now I'm ready to add my photo on there. There you go. And I can decide whether I want it on the left, in the middle, on the right. Just play around with the placement. But I also cut out of the scan and cut with my own handwriting, my title, which is New Orleans. And if you are at all curious about how to cut out handwriting using your scan and cut, be sure to see the video. That's all about it. And I'll give you all my best tips. You can see how delicate and scrolly that is. It looks really cool. And then I've also done my journaling strips here. And these are just tiny little pieces of paper. I like to use my handwriting. If you're a person who is more careful, you might want to do type Typewriting or anything like that. But you know, it's just an easy way of adding your journaling onto a busy background like this. It really helps it to all pop off. And you can see that in absolutely no time at all, I have a wonderful, artsy, cool, funky, one of a kind layout all about my trip to New Orleans. So I hope you'll give a try making your own stencil. It's super easy and it really is uniquely you. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, please stop by my blog at balderdesigns.typepad.com. And of course, you should check out the Scan and Cut website for lots more information, videos, and facts about the Scan and Cut. And that's scanandcut.com. Thanks so much for watching.